So hi everyone and welcome to this video on an actual uh, example uh, to our various concepts that we had learned so far in this module under expect uh, under uh, decision making under uncertainty. So for this particular video, we're going to deal with an example on well getting expected utility, proving the properties of risk aversion and um, the non satiation in wealth and those various things that we talked about, Jensen's inequality and some other things. So we're going to try and uh, get those all in this particular video with an actual mathematical example. And I hope that uh, what may seem fuzzy, at least on the theory side, can be sort of clarified and cleared up when we get to this math side. So for example, we have this problem. So say uh, your utility or your money utility function defined over wealth is given as u w is equal to w raised to 0.5 so that's your utility function okay the first number tells us that we need to show that uh, a consumer perf always prefers more wealth to less wealth and that the consumer is risk averse that should be straightforward then question two is uh finding the expected utility of current wealth then question three deals with our fair gamble and the concepts that we discussed with it that we shouldn't prefer fair gambles and four is uh generally basically proving uh jensen's inequality so that's what we're gonna sort of do in this video okay so let's start with our example okay so the first question is uh show um that the consumer always prefers more wealth to less wealth and that the consumer is risk averse so one to prove, so to prove that a consumer prefers, okay, prefers more wealth, more wealth to less wealth, okay, to less wealth, it must be that uh, the derivative of the money of utility function with respect to W is greater than zero for all uh, positive levels of wealth. Okay, so essentially we're just gonna derive and take the first order derivative. So to do that should be simple enough. So that's D U W with respect to W. So we're gonna take the derivative of the utility function with respect to wealth. Note that uh, U W is equal to w raised to 0 0.5. So if we take the first order derivative of that, that should be fairly straightforward. That's 0 0.5 w raised to negative 0 0.5, which is just equal to, so if it's negative 0 0.5, you just put it down to the denominator and that should make it positive. So that's 0 0.5 over w raised to 0 0.5. And of course, the, if you plug in a positive w, this thing will be greater than zero. Hence, uh, you prefer, so you prefer more wealth, okay, more wealth to less wealth. Okay, so that's the first part. So you prefer uh, more wealth to less, uh, to less wealth. Okay, so the second one is to prove that the consumer is risk averse. So to prove, prove consumer is, uh, is risk averse averse okay it must be that uh, must be that uh, the second order derivative of the utility function is less than zero right for all w greater than zero okay so to do that we just take the derivative of this right so uh, that's just the same as taking the second order derivative of the whole function or you can take the first order derivative of this derivative okay so that's the second order derivative, w squared, right? And that's going to be equal to, so if we use this form, so we can just use simply that, negative 0 0.5, bring it down. So that's negative 0 0.25, w raised to negative 0 0.5 minus 1, that's negative 1.5. If we rearrange this, that's going to be negative 0 0.25 all over w raised to 1.5. Right and W and this thing, of course, since there's a negative sign there and W is positive generally, then this should be negative, and this means that the consumer, right, that the consumer 
is uh, risk averse. Right? So that's what it means. So that consumer is risk averse. Okay, so that's one solve. Okay, so uh, let, let's just recall what is two. Two is suppose your current level of wealth is a hundred. Okay, find your expected you find the expected utility of your current wealth. Okay, so of your current wealth, that's just basically plugging in a hundred to the utility function. Okay, so two, since okay, so since your current wealth, your current wealth is certain okay so that's certain because 100 is something that you have okay uh, at the beginning whether you choose to engage in the gambler or so if you choose to engage in a gambler or not then the 100 could become higher or lower but if you choose to not engage in the gamble that 100 is a certain wealth to you it's always with you so uh that's gonna be then uh, then the expected utility of wealth is equal to the utility of wealth so how do you do that? That's just basically applying the formula EU 100. So you plug in the value of wealth, which is in this case 100 to the utility function that you have. So that's gonna become 100. You know, it's W raised to 0.5. So it's 100 raised to 0.5 or basically just a square root of 100. And this is equal to 10. We ignore the negative part because of course there's no such thing as a negative wealth. Okay, so at least in this case, so you have 10 as the expected utility. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so that solves two very quick problem. So next one is, suppose you face a gamble with a 50-50 shot of winning or losing an additional 50 pesos or 50 units of currency. We're first tasked to verify that it's a fair gamble. Well, to do that, we just need to prove that the expected value of the gamble is zero. Then we need to find the expected value of the or wealth with the gamble. So what's the expected value of, what will the 100 become with the gamble? And what's the expected utility of wealth without the gamble? Okay, so I think they should be without the gamble. So we're gonna calculate for that one. Okay, so uh, let's go for three. Okay, so typically what I like to do is, um, I like to construct the probability, the distribution function as a table. So uh, we need to prove first that it's a fair gamble. So the PDF, of the payoffs, right, of the payoffs is just, uh, of the gamble, right, of the gamble is just, uh, you know, so you have two states of the world, right? You could have a state where in uh, you win, okay, so let's call this state one, or you have a state where you lose, so let's call that state two. Then you have a probability of each state, a probability, and then we denote that as P subscript S. Then we also have the value of the payoff. So value of payoff. And we often denote this as Z. Okay, so when the person wins, okay, so uh, as we, so if you recall from the problem, the gamble is a 50-50 shot. So that just means that the probability of winning or losing is just the same. So this is 0.5, right? And this is also 0.5. And note that this should sum up to one, right? Because all probabilities must sum up to one for all states of the world. Then when the person wins, if you recall from the problem, he or she will win 50 pesos. So that's plus PHP 50. If the person loses, then uh, the person loses 50 pesos. So PHP 50 is gone. Then all we need to do to prove that it's a fair gamble is that uh, to prove, okay, to prove it's a fair gamble, a fair gamble, then what needs to happen is that the expected utility of the pay, oh, I'm sorry, the expected value of the payoff should be equal to zero. And that's just simple to do. So the expected value of the payoff is just 0.5 times uh, the positive payoff, which is in state one when you win, okay, my uh, plus 0.5 times the payoff when you lose. So that's minus, 50. And you note know that this one is going to be equal to 50. This one, I'm sorry, uh, th th that first one will be equal to um, 25. Then this one will be minus 25 because we have a negative number there. So 25 minus 25, that's equal to zero. Therefore, we can say that this is a fair gamble. So this is a fair, okay, so this is a fair gamble. Okay, so that's proving the first part of the question. 
Okay, so now let's get to the second part of the question. Okay, what if you accept, okay, so if you accept, accept, the fair gamble, say you chose to partake in the fair gamble, even though you know like you shouldn't, right? So if you accept the fair gamble, okay, then the PDF will change uh, slightly. Then uh, the PDF uh, of your final wealth. So we're now dealing with the final wealth. So remember you have an initial wealth of 100. How will that wealth change because you partook in the gamble of your final wealth with, okay, with, the gamble is going to be, so again, you have states. So states, uh, that's S. You have one and then two. One where you win, two where you lose. Then you have probability. Probability, again, uh, both 0.5, right? Then you have the value of final wealth, right? If the person wins, right, if the person wins, so their initial stock of wealth is 100, then if they win the gamble, that 100 goes up by 50 because they win 50 pesos. So that's plus 50. That becomes 150, right? But when the person loses the gamble, so that's 100, okay, they get deducted 50 pesos or 50 units of currency. So that's minus 50. So this will become 50. Then what, you, what we're going to be tasked to compute for now is the expected utility of uh, uh, the expected, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the expected uh, wealth. Okay, so it's the expected value of the final wealth, right? So the expected value of the final wealth is just this. Okay, so you multiply the probability times the value of final wealth. So that's going to be 0 0.5 times 150 plus 0 0.5 times 50. Note that uh, it's essentially this procedure that we had here, except that we add to the, to the, the basis the initial stock of wealth. Because of course, you started with 100. You didn't automatically start with zero in this problem. So you started with 100. So you find that this is equal to 75, right? So that's 75 plus uh, you have here um, 25. And that's equal to a hundred. So essentially, if you uh, if you uh, took the gamble, uh, you, you, the expected value of your final wealth is essentially equal to the to the value of your certain wealth, which is one hundred. If you cho chose not to partake in the gamble, right? So note that um, note that the expected value of wealth is equal to your certain value of wealth without the gamble. So, however, okay, however. In this case, right, in this case, okay, your current wealth, your current wealth, if you choose to do a gamble, if your current wealth, if you choose to do a gamble, right, is, uh, is risky wealth, is a risky wealth, right, because it's a, you could win a greater amount than 100, or you could win a smaller amount than 100, so you don't know which one will happen, right, it's a risky, it's a risky wealth, right. So uh, let, let's calculate for the expected utility of wealth. Okay, so the expected utility, okay, with the gamble, okay, so uh, your expected utility, your expected uh, utility, if you accept the fair gamble, accept the fair gamble, the fair gamble, is uh, it's going to be, um, uh, this is just gonna be equal to the expected utility of wealth equal to 0.5 times the utility when you evaluate it to W1 plus 0.5 times the utility evaluated at W2. Now what's the, you need to know what this thing is and what this thing is. Fortunately, it should be easy enough. So if you just recall the table that we did earlier, so remember we had states, Okay, so one, if you win, then, uh, whoops, I misspelled win. Two, if you lose, then again, the probability is the same. That's 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Then the value of final wealth that you have is 150 and then 50, right? So let me just separate them. Ooh, uh, let's just separate them, okay? Then you, you need to now compute for the utility. So the utility of... Final wealth. Okay, so 
if it so happens that you win the gamble, so you win 150 pesos in total, so your wealth goes up by 50. What we're going to do is that final wealth, we're going to evaluate it to the utility function. In this case, it's W raised to 0.5. So this is going to be 150 raised to 0.5, which is equal to 12.25. Then if in the case you lose the gamble, so your final wealth is 50, that's going to be raised to 0.5, you get 7.07. .07. Then just to get the expected utility of wealth, of final wealth with the gamble, so that's the expected utility of wealth, equal to 0.5 times, um, if you win, that's 12.25, uh, plus 0.5 times, if you lose, that's 7.07, .07, that's equal to 9.66. And this is the expected utility of wealth with the fair gamble. Okay, so that, that answers the question. Then, uh, so now let's, uh, so we basically answered the, these questions so far. So we answered all, all of these except for this part and then this part, but then we're going to answer both of these uh, now. So we're going to show that you will reject or refuse to participate in this fair gamble if your choices are made according to expected utility theorem. Now, as we've been discussing so far, we've always said that a person will always reject a fair gamble if their preferences adhere to the axioms we discussed in their expected utility theorem. And this is primarily the reason why. Okay, so remember, okay, so, so let's answer four. Remember, okay, remember, if the person, okay, person opted, okay, opted not, okay, not to engage in the gamble, right, in the gamble, then the certain wealth, then the certain wealth, okay, the certain wealth, or the wealth that he would have at the end is a hundred, right, as a hundred. And basically, uh, the equivalent of that in utility notation, so the expected utility of W, uh, the expect, uh, the essentially this part, right, your expected wealth at the end is equal to just a hundred raised to 0.5, that's just equal to 10. Right, this is equal to 10. But notice that if, uh, if you take the gamble, if you take the gamble, okay, if you take the gamble, right, if you take the gamble, okay, your expected utility of wealth is equal to 9.66. It's this thing that we solve for here, right? Because remember, wealth becomes a risky wealth when you engage in a gamble. But if you chose not to do the gamble, Right? You are certain that you have that 100 because you didn't engage in it. So that will always be with you. But not because you chose to engage in the gamble, suppose you did that, right? you will now put part of your wealth at risk. You could either get 150 or 50. Then you compute for the expected utility of that and that determines to be 9.66. Then what you notice is that, okay, so since, okay, since, the utility of expect of the expected wealth, right, which is equal to 10, is greater than uh, 9.66, right, which is equal to the expected utility of wealth with the gamble, then, okay, then you uh, will choose, will choose not, okay, not to participate, not to participate, in the fair gamble. And I want you to just notice that um, this thing here, this conclusion here, is essentially the concept we discussed in the last video, which is Jensen's inequality. So I hope that you were able to see that uh, this is the concept of expected utility and that this is the reason why, uh, according to this theorem, uh, people do not partake in fair gambles. So I hope that you were able to appreciate that more with this mathematical example. So thank you for your attention. I know it's quite, been quite a lengthy video, but uh, I'll see you in the next one when we start our discussions on insurances, on, uh, on how insurances factor in uh, decision-making under uncertainty. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.